This is just a short video to explain multicolour printing on RepRap machines. If we want to print in multicolours, then those colours have to be laid down as real solid material. So, for example, if we have a grey cube and we want it to have a green face, then that green face has to be solid. We can't simply point at a face and say, make that one face out of the six green. And the way we achieve that is to use the difference operator in the CAD system to make a green, thin, solid face and then also to make a cube which um, has a slight amount missing from the place where we want that face to go by subtracting the green solid from the grey solid. And then when we put them both together, we'll end up with the object we want. And obviously the coloured part has to be sufficiently thick that the 3D printer will print it successfully as a separate object. OK, so let's look at a slightly more complicated test example. We want to print this object, which consists of a white disc in the middle, four green quarters surrounding it, and then four red inserts between those quarters. So now we've got a three colour object um, made up of three separate solid items. And we can look at those individually. So we have a white cylinder, and then we've subtracted that white cylinder from a red cross, and the CAD system can't quite do the subtraction operation when it's depicting colour, but as we'll see in a moment, it gets it right when we do the proper evaluation. And then we subtract both the white cylinder and the red cross from a green cuboid. And again, we've got problems in the middle. But if we now evaluate that object properly, we get the right shape, albeit in the wrong colour, because the high, high quality evaluation doesn't do colour. Uh, we can now save that object, that single object, which will appear green in the final print, uh, as an STL file. and do the same thing for the red the red part and the white part right now we've got three separate STL files for our three separate colors that we want in our individual printed object we can now load those into the slicer software find them in the file system We start with the white, with the white uh, object, that we could start with any of them, and we'll just say we want that as a white material when the, when the material selection window comes up. And there it is at the bottom left hand corner of the uh, build bed. Uh, we don't want to build it there, we want to build it somewhere near the middle, so we'll move it to the middle of the build bed. Um, and just have a look, make sure everything's okay. Now. If we were to load another STL file, that would be completely independent of this object and we can move them around wherever we like. But if we select this object and now load another STL file that's geometrically related to it, for example the green part that we know surrounds the white part that we've just loaded, uh, because the white part is selected in the view on the uh, picture of the bed, uh, when it loads it will load in the correct relative position. So we've now got the white cylinder and the green surround and if we now select them both uh, we can now load up the red tell it that we want to make that from red material and we've got our object reassembled in the correct relative positions on the build bed ready to be sliced uh, if we don't want to do that at the moment, we can save it as a standard RepRap format RFO file uh, and then all that information will be preserved uh, and we'll be able to load it up again 
uh, in the future to slice it. So let's save it and go for coffee. Okay, so uh, we come back, we want to load up our RFO file that we previously saved. There it is, ready on the build bed. And we can now slice that. And the slicing program starts at the top. So we're looking at the top of the white cylinder and it'll gradually slice all the way down to the bottom. Right, we take our G-codes out of the slicer program, put them on an SD card and load them into the RetRap Machines controller. Let's print it. few things remain to be done. Uh, in particular, we need to set up a scheme whereby the system prints a uh, shield as it's printing the main object uh, for it to wipe its noses on uh, so that we can get rid of some of the dribble from the unused nozzles when the ones that being, one that's being used uh, is printing the part.